Hello, my name is Andreas. I'm a service engineer at Kemper. Today, we're doing a maintenance check on a Kemper header. For the maintenance check, we go through a maintenance list that can be found on our home page. Let's start by checking the gathering drum cleaners. The procedure is always the same on all drums. First, we have to remove the screws connecting the drum with the gearbox. That enables us to spin the drum. Otherwise, you cannot adjust the cleaners correctly. Now, once we've done that, we turn the drum to check the cleaners to see whether they are sharp-edged or worn. If they are worn, then turn them over or replace them. In this case, we pull the cleaner out, turn it by 180 degrees so that the sharp edge is at the front. Do not completely tighten the screw yet. Pull the cleaner all the way out. Now the drum can be turned and checked to see if the cleaner passes the scraper freely. The scraper is located behind the drum and the cleaner passes through it. If you notice that the cleaner is pulled out too far, you have to push it back in a little bit. And now we can see the cleaner is pulled out too far. Look, there's a bit of paint from the scraper left on the cleaner. This indicates that it's still set very tight and requires further adjustment. Loosen the screw again and repeat the above steps until the cleaner passes through the scraper without scraping. Now it is free, we can now tighten the cleaner. This should be repeated on every row of teeth. The procedure must be carried out on all the drums for all cleaners on the machine. While the drum is still loose, you should check all the teeth for wear and deformation. Bent teeth have to be straightened, otherwise the drums and the cleaners might be seriously damaged. If the header has been in the field for several years or worked a lot, the teeth on the bottom row might be worn. This may cause the drums not to be able to guide the plants properly. If this is the case, there are points available that have the shape of the teeth when they were new and those points can be welded on the worn teeth. Now we're going to check the feeding drum. We check this in the same procedure as we did on the gathering drum. Firstly, we have to disassemble the cover on top of the drum. We remove the six screws that connect the drums and the gearbox. After that, the drum can be turned and the condition and the settings of the cleaners can be checked. Here, there is one cleaner installed per row of tines. This cleaner is already worn, so we turn it too. We remove the screw again and take the cleaner off. It may not be easy because of the paint buildup in that spot. Then we install it in the same way as we did with the gathering drum. If you do not turn or replace the cleaners in time, then it can lead to plugging in this area because of crop building up there. This definitely applies to both feeding drums. The blades must always be sharp edged and the coating has to be in good shape. If the coating is worn, the plants are not being cut evenly. And plugging might occur next to the divider points. Make sure the blades are in good condition before the start of the season. This is the cleaner underneath the blades. There are two pieces per rotor installed opposite each other. If the cleaner is worn, you should replace it immediately. If you don't do this in time, you will again get problems with material accumulating at the divider points and disturbing the even crop flow. 
Let's replace the cleaners. Installing new cleaners, you always have to use new nuts and bolts and tighten them properly. It's always important to replace both scrapers to avoid imbalances. On the 300 Plus series, there is a cleaner installed underneath the knife rotor. This cleaner removes dirt building up between the gearbox housing and rotor. Make sure that this is sharp edged as well. Once it's worn, replace it. Look, this is a worn cleaner. See the difference compared to a new one? One cleaner can be used for both rotating directions. Use new nuts and bolts and make sure that the blade cleaners are in good shape too. You must always replace both cleaners to avoid imbalances. Each gathering drum has its own scraper, which strips off the crop from the drum. The gap between the scraper and the drum should be as small as possible. If that becomes too large, crop builds up and flow is disturbed. Check also the gap between the gathering drum and the divider points. That must be set as close as possible. Look, the distance on this is too big. You can put your hand in between and that's too much. To adjust the divider points, I loosen these three screws. Now we have adjusted the divider and so we retighten the screws again. These are shift collars. They connect the drive line from the center frame and the outer wings. One of them is fixed on the hexagonal shaft and the other one is movable. This one must be greased regularly using the grease nipple in the hexagonal shaft. If this is not done, the collar might get stuck on the hexagonal shaft and power flow might be interrupted. Also, there must be sharp edges on the collars to transfer the load accordingly. We are now behind the machine and there are the liquid cooled clutches that must be maintained once a year. For this, we must remove the clutches. We have to remove the screws to open and remove the guards. Here are the clutches and we take them out to maintain them. We remove the circlip using pliers. We take the snap ring from the shaft and then we push the shaft into one of the clutches. Then we take out the clutch together with the shaft And after that, we take out the other clutch. The clutch must be maintained once a year just before the season. The discs have to be able to move freely. If this is not done regularly, the discs stick to the clutch. Then, too high torque is being transferred, which can damage the drives. Now we show how to do that. We now disassemble the clutch to clean it. Tighten the six nuts to preload the spring package underneath. Now the upper circlip can be removed. Remember its installation position to ensure it will be reinstalled later on in the same place. Take out the spring package and the friction discs and the coolant reservoir too. There are two friction discs inside, one on top of the reservoir and the other one below. Clean the discs and the friction surfaces with sandpaper
and reassemble the clutch afterwards. Put the ring back in the place it was before. That's it. Put the clutch back into the header first and loosen the nuts afterwards. Otherwise, the clutch might not be centered and cannot be installed. This procedure is the same for left hand and right hand clutch. Each clutch protects one half of the machine. This means if the drums on the right half of the machine stop turning, the right hand clutch has to be checked. While reinstalling the clutch on the header, apply a little bit of grease to the gears at the front and the rear. Don't use too much because otherwise it might penetrate the friction discs. Now reinstall the clutches in reverse order. Don't forget to loosen the nuts of the spring packages once the clutches have been put back onto the machine before installing the guards. <laughs>